In this video, we'll do the integral from negative infinity to infinity of sine x over x dx. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Okay, so we're going to separate these into two integrals. The integral from negative infinity to 0 of sine x over x dx plus the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x over x dx. So you might ask what happens exactly at x equals 0, but that will just be the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x, and that's 1, so that converges. Okay, so we're going to turn this integral into the other integral. So we're going to do it, instead of a u sub, we're going to let x go to negative x. That means that dx will go to negative dx. So I don't want to change the variable name, so we're just going to do it like this. This will be the integral. So negative infinity will turn into infinity. Zero will stay at zero. Well, sine of negative x over negative x. And then we're going to have negative at the front dx, because the negative dx. And we'll have the same integral as before, so I'm not going to write that. Okay, sine of negative x is the same thing as negative sine x, because sine is odd. And the negative and negative will cancel. This will change the bounds to switch them. So that would be, instead of infinity being first, infinity will be last, or the upper bound, and zero will be the lower bound of sine x over x dx, plus the same thing. So that would be two times the integral from zero to infinity of sine x over x. Okay, so we're going to let this equal to i, but we're actually going to do i of t, so this will be a function, and we're going to see what we're going to plug in. So we're going to multiply something so we get rid of the x in the denominator. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x over x. Now we want to multiply it by something, so when we differentiate it, it will cancel the x in the denominator. So that, that has to be e to the something. So that would be e to the tx dx. Now we need the negative in the exponent because if we the bounds are from 0 to infinity so for it to converge it needs to be negative tx okay now the original integral we have is sine x over x so this has to be 1 so that means that t has to be 0 for this to work so now let's do i prime of t so using Feynman's trick you can move this into the integral so this will be sine x over x instead of normal derivative with respect to t, it's partial derivative with respect to t, of e to the minus tx, and then dx. Okay, this will be the integral from 0 to infinity, sine x over x. The derivative of e to the something is the same thing, but we have to multiply by the partial derivative with respect to negative tx, which is minus x, because it's with respect to t. Then we have dx x over x will cancel, so we're going to have the integral from 0 to infinity of negative sine x e to the negative tx, e to the minus tx dx. Okay, so now this is going to be di method or integration by parts. So let's differentiate e to the minus tx since it's easier. Let's integrate minus sine x. Why not? So we have plus minus plus. So we have to do this three times, three rows, because this sine x will come back. So the integral of minus sine x is minus. No, the inter, okay. The integral of minus sine x is cosine x because the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, and the integral of cosine x is sine x because the derivative of sine x is, my, is cosine x. Okay. This will be minus t because this is with respect to x e to the minus t x. And then another negative t, which will turn into t squared, e to the minus tx. Okay, so we're going to multiply across. Okay, so we have the integral from 0 to infinity of minus sine x, e to the minus tx, equals... So we can factor this out, this e to the minus tx. So this will be e to the minus tx, multiplied by cosine x. Then we're going to have minus minus plus plus t times sine x, okay? And then finally, we're going to have, this will be an integral. But we're going to write this as minus t squared, and then put in another negative inside the integral, because the original has negative in it. So negative sine x e to the minus tx dx. It's a lot of writing, but we'll get through it. Okay, so we're going to add t squared on both sides. So let's add t squared times this integral. 
So let's just write the integral, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that and that will cancel. Now we have to write, this is one by default plus t squared. So that's what happens when this cancels. So this goes away. Okay, but we have to remember this has bounds from x equals zero to x going to infinity. So x approaches infinity. Okay, so this will be the integral one plus t squared zero to infinity of minus sine x e to the minus tx will be, okay, let's plug in infinity first. So we have th this bound and this bound to worry about. Okay, at x going to infinity, e to the minus infinity goes to zero really fast. So it doesn't even matter what the rest of it is. So that goes to zero. At x equals zero, plugging x equals zero in, you have minus, because that's a lower bound, e to the zero, which is one, so we're going to have negative 1 times cosine 0 plus 0 times something plus t times sine 0, which is 0. So this would just be minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1. So we have that the integral from 0 to infinity of minus sine x e to the minus tx dx. I forgot the dx here. It doesn't matter that much, but negative 1 over 1 plus t squared. Okay, so that is what we have for this. So minus one over one plus t squared. And that is i prime of t. Okay, so we wanna solve i of zero. So we want i of zero. And we have that i prime of t equals minus one over one plus t squared. Okay, good. So now we can just integrate both sides with respect to t. Okay, good, so we have i of t equals, well, the integral of negative one over one plus t squared is negative inverse tangent of t, okay? And now we have plus c, because every integral is plus c. Okay, but what is c in this case? So let's look at the original. Now, if t goes to infinity, e to the minus infinity times x, x is, posi x is between zero and infinity, so x is positive. That means that e to the minus infinity is zero, which means that i of infinity, right? i of infinity equals zero. I know it's the limit as i goes to, in as t going to infinity, but that's i of infinity equals zero. So let's plug in t going to infinity. So we'll have zero on the left-hand side equals minus inverse tangent of infinity plus c. So c, it's weird notation, but c is inverse tangent of infinity. And this goes to pi over two. Because tangent of pi over two is sine of pi over two, which is one, over cosine of pi over two, which is zero, and then it's from the right, so it goes to infinity. Okay, somehow it goes to infinity. Okay, so we have that c is pi over two, which means that i of t is the negative inverse tangent of t, right, plus c, which is pi over 2. So now at t equals 0, we have that i of 0, inverse tangent of 0, zero is 0, I'll just write it, plus pi over 2. So this is, of course, pi over 2. Okay, so this is pi over two, which means this is two times pi over two. Two over two will cancel, leaving us with pi. And that is the end of the video. Hope you liked it.